Hey everyone, welcome to the program. Look, we've got a special guest for you today and we're gonna find out how do you sell a half a million dollar policy in a month? Hey man, how you doing, man? Look, is it Chris or Chase? Which one is it? I, I, Chase is my middle name, and that's what I've always gone by. So it's Chase. Okay, because it just confused the heck out of me here for a second. There. All right. Hey everybody, we're here with my man, Chris Tackett. Man, thanks so much for being here with us today. This is going to be an exciting one. I'm looking forward to it, and really seeing you know how we can really get in there and help some agents really kind of follow some of the examples that that you've already set in place but chris you know how long have you actually been in the life insurance industry when did this whole thing get started for you the end of 2019 is when it actually got started i had my license for a couple of years before that but i didn't mm-hmm. do anything with it till around october november of 2019. okay so you you came in at the perfect time right at the beginning of uh right before COVID. <laughs> Right before COVID, <laughs> 2020 was a great year. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tell us a little bit about that, Chris. I mean, how did you manage to get through the whole COVID thing or, or what were the challenges you were facing, you know, in your career at that time? So it was about half halfway through 2020, right? When COVID started really taking off June or something like that. And everybody's really ramping up the mass mandates and whatnot. And so we just, I mean, and at that time I was just full field sales. I wasn't doing any type of telesales at all. Um, this is all still kind of new to me. So virtual sales, telesales, um, it wasn't my game at all. I was just full field sales, um, running 30, 40 appointments a week, running myself in the ground. I would drive from Texas to Missouri, from Missouri to Oklahoma. And if I found oh. a hot spot, I'd stay there for a week or so. And it, it was rough, you know, leaving my wife and at the time, three kids behind. Um, so it, it was rough, you know, just to be even before COVID, it was hard on me as a family guy, you know. Um, but when COVID really started hitting, um, we had to ramp it up a little bit and start using masks and whatnot, just like yeah. everywhere, just not. Um, and so we would we'd make that very plain on the phone. And, you know, I was very surprised. I was very surprised, especially with field sales, how the sales didn't slow down and it didn't seem to backtrack at all. It seemed like the business only ramped up even more. Um, it was at that moment when. I've got that breakthrough breakthrough moment to where it was like I went from 200,000 AP up to 450,000 AP by the end of the year. And it was just that that snap. It was like, hey, you you don't want to get COVID. You don't want to die. Minute, wait, wait a <laughs> minute. I, I can't let you. I can't let you just blow past that. 450,000 in AP. But yeah, my first year in business. Your first year in the business. That kind of deserves some sort of, of, of air horn here or something. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's miraculous. Um, not a lot of agents do that, at least not in their first year. Um, so you had your nose to the grindstone and you were really dedicated to, to making this happen. What was the why involved in that, that actually pushed you to work as hard as you did? So man, since I got out of high school, I've always tried to find that, that job for me. Um, and, and when I first got out of high school, I was a CNA, right? It was a little bit of a price, a little bit of a <laughs> payment difference there. But um, when I first got out of high school, it was decent money and, and I really enjoyed helping people. So I've always been able to connect with the elderly and the elderly has always been able to connect with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's just always been my crowd of people. Um, but, you know, as time went on, I had to go on. I got married and I had to find a, a job that paid more well. And so I was going from job to job to job, just trying to find what really worked for me. And nothing out there fit me. Nothing would work for me. Um, and and it wasn't that I'd get fired or anything. I just I just I couldn't find that right fit. Um, it wasn't until I came across life insurance, and uh, you know my why was at the top of my the forefront of my mind. Going, my why is that I've got to make something work. I've been going years and years. Here I am married, got several kids, <laughs> got kids on the way, and I got I got to do something, right? I got to I got to be that man, and I've got to put. You've got to go to the grind, you know. And so I had some good mentors that showed me a few things. Yeah. And, uh, and I just took off and didn't look back. I, they, I was told to work. You know, I didn't know a whole lot. Uh, when I came in the life insurance business, I knew nothing about sales. I couldn't sell you a, I couldn't sell you anything. Right. So I couldn't sell ice to a Eskimo, like they say, you know, <laughs> so, um, but I did, I did right away. I did. I don't know how, um, God is good. So. Yes, he is all the time. As we say, yeah. you know, you know, with that being said, and, and having the dedication that, that you've had over a very short career span here. I mean, it's only been two years, yeah. um, you know, that you've really been been doing this. 
has there ever been a moment where you thought this isn't for me? Yes, <laughs> I, can, I can honestly and boldly say yes. Um, there's been a few times yeah. and, and I, I can't speak for everyone, but I think in many careers, I think if you're really going to exceed in something, you kind of get to that point in your life where you're like, this has gotten very rough. It's gotten very hard. Mm-hmm. We're doing without this, this and that. And I'm being told to, you know, at the, barely, at the early part of your game, you're being told to buy more leads. Right, 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 <laughs> you know, you're right. being said, don't turn back. Don't look back now. Keep going. Yeah. And uh and I did, you know, I did. But at the first, you know, it's the forefront of my mind going, is this really for me? But I had to say, Chase, you've asked this question a million other times at a million other jobs. Wow. This is for you. You've got to go, you know. So whether this is for you or not, you're going to make it work. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, sometimes it does come down to that to that point of decision, you know, yeah. of exactly what it is that you're going to do and what you're going to hang your hat on, you know, and, exactly. and kind of what you're going to be be known for. What were some of the challenges like last year, even before you came to AJC? What were some of those challenges you were facing that that kind of brought you our way? So what actually brought me y'all's way in a whole as far as the business aspect goes was just the leads in general. Um, And I think this goes for many agents, many that I know anyway, is that most of the leads out there, whether it's true that they're exclusive or not, they're horrible leads. Um, and I'm not speaking for every lead generator or every lead company out there. I've got friends that are in the business that do other things and they do great leads, you know, but at some point they either slowed way down to where I was getting 15 or 20 leads in a day to where I was only getting a couple in a day. And then it would get to the point where that wasn't the problem. It was people not answering the phones all the time, you know, um, or they would answer the phone and be like, I have no idea what you're doing calling me. I didn't fill out any information or I don't know what this is about. And I know we get those here and there, you know, no matter what the lead is probably, but when it's every phone call, <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, or I just got a policy yesterday. I'm like, well, did you just fill out the form today? You know, I didn't. <laughs> so it was, it was just like that. So I was like, okay, oh, there's wow. got to be a better way. I know that I've got to have leads. I don't want to cold call, but there's got to be a better way. Um, and the Arturo Johnson consulting definitely showed me the better way. Well, I mean, you have, excuse me, I had a cough there. You have worked tremendously hard to get to where it is that you are. One of the, in, in my estimation, one of the toughest things for life insurance agents to get over is the, or to have is that mental toughness to just pick up the phone again and dial. Yeah. You know, how do you, or how did you, or how do you work your way through that? Because I mean, for those that don't know, I mean, calling a hundred, 200, 300, 500 leads in a day, you know, twice a week, you yeah. know, or more, how do you go, how did you get through that? I knew, I knew that the bread was at the other end of the table. Okay. <laughs> I had to get up and I had to go down and grab the bread, you know? Um, and it's, but it's not that easy. You're right, man. It's, it's mental toughness and it's very, very difficult, especially somebody like me that I've always rewarded myself. You know, I always, um, have tried the easy way out when I was younger. That's what I would do. I would always look yeah. for the easiest and the fastest way. And I, I can say that now because of where I'm at today. Um, but I've had to take the rough route and that yeah. rough route isn't always dialing 10 leads and them all, all booking appointments with you and yeah. you all writing $1,200 AP on all, every single one of them. You know, that's the, that's the dream and it doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. Um, you've got to go to work. And when your mind tells you that, Hey, it's not a good day to dial, it's definitely a good day to dial. Um, and, and that's hard. You're right. It's, it's difficult. It's the mental toughness and we can, uh, every salesman I've talked to that's good and does what they're supposed to do always talks about the mindset behind the sale and the the psychology. And it's, uh, it's not about being a good salesman. It's about just getting up and working. And of course you need to know how to sell and you'll learn that, but it all starts with that mental toughness that you're talking about. You got to push through. Yeah. You mentioned before, I mean, um, when you started, you couldn't sell ice to an Eskimo. You know, so what kind of things do you, do you look at or watch or read that have, have helped you to actually gain that, that sales ability to now be for all intents and purposes, an expert in sales? Sure. Um, I listen to a lot of Arturo. Okay. <laughs> Arturo has some good input, right? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> just, recent, probably in the last six months or so. Um, but man, um, I, I could name a few, but man, I, I do spend a lot of time on YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. and I mean, you and me both uh, would agree that there's a lot of free content on there unless you yeah. go into something like this and you, you invest into your business. Um, but no, there's, there's so much, there's so much out there and I don't listen to everybody, but Zig Ziglar, uh, mm-hmm. Grant Cardone, there's, there's yeah. several, um, I listen to real estate insurance, all kinds of different salesmen because there's always, there's always a different route to go about something when it doesn't work for you. 
Um, so I, I feel like you shouldn't listen to everybody, but you should, you know, should eat the fish, eat the fish and leave the bones. Right. So you just, yeah. you take what's good for you and your clients and, uh, and you go from there. So yeah, I'm reading, I'm listening. Um, always trying to figure out different ways to, um, break the ice as you had in your, you had in your podcast earlier, I'm going off subject a little bit, but you were talking no about how, how it's kind of, um, uh, like the, the, the first appointment the over the phone cell is like a blind date, right? You're talking about a blind date. Oh and man, you like, saw that one already? I, 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 did, yeah, I literally yeah. just posted that. This- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was watching it right before we, we oh got on the call. Um, so yeah, no, but it's like a blind date and you're absolutely right. So yeah, it goes for the sales funnels and the landing page and all that good stuff as well. But at the same time, I'm thinking before I even get on the phone call, like, okay, they've done all that, but still to me, they don't know me. You know, mm-hmm. they may have seen a video of me, but they don't know me. I can listen to Grant Cardone, but he doesn't know me and I don't know him. Right. So I can talk to Earl Hall the first time and we don't really know each other yet. But how do I break that? How do I break the ice with Earl? How does Earl break the ice with me? How do, mm-hmm. how do I break the how do I break that sales call? I'm, I'm calling them and they know that I'm going to try to sell them something. So yeah. how do I break that ice right away? How do I make it not a blind date? You know, how do I make it where their eyes are opened right away? Because they need to open their eyes right away. Otherwise, they're going to mm-hmm. hang up on me. And so that's, I mean, I believe that's, that's, that's the biggest part. And that's what I've had to learn is I've got to make a friend right away. Mm-hmm. If I don't make a friend within the first 30 seconds, they're not going to trust me. And if you only, you only buy from somebody that you trust. Absolutely. So that's, that's what we got to do. <clears throat> Man. Well, well tell us, Chris, I mean, so January, I mean, this is what February 7th. I mean, in January you did, you, you sold a half a million dollar ROP policy return on premium. Yeah. How yeah. did that come about and, and what did that look like for you? Um, this was a pretty cool sale. I liked it. Um, I did a lot of talking with the wife and, and in that I'm, when we're doing mortgage protection, um, I'm always aiming for the husband. My, a lot of people say it should be your goal to just go after both of them to get them both covered. And, and I agree. I think they should both be covered. Um, cause you never know statistically the man dies first, but mm-hmm. there's that, you know, God ordained chance that she dies first. Right. And so he needs that payment as well, but I'm always going for the breadwinner because I would want somebody to go after me first. You know, I would want somebody to go, Hey, I care for your family so much that I want you to get that coverage for your wife. And it's going to, it's going to strike my heart. You know, if I don't have anything in in place and I've got a $400,000 mortgage and I die tomorrow and she's got another $10,000 paycheck coming before that's it. Yeah. I I would want them to go for me. So I'm always, I'm, I'm going for him first. Um, and, and then if I can, if I can close him, then I might be able to close her. But if I don't, I feel like my job's accomplished because now they've got it in their boat to go, okay, honey, you need to get a little something, something I can take care of myself, but you need to, you yeah. know, and if not, that's okay. But my job to me is that I've got it accomplished when I cover the main breadwinner, which most of the time is the husband, um, not every time. Right. But I'm always mm-hmm. going after him. If he's the breadwinner, I'll go after her if she's the breadwinner. Right. Um, <clears throat> but that's, that's what I went after. And so, uh, having that to play off with, with the wife, um, I started saying, okay, what would you do? You know, chances are he passed away tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What's it looking like for you? she's like, it's looking pretty bad. She used a different word. Um, but it's looking, <laughs> it's not looking good. And he's like, well, no, it doesn't look good at all. And he agreed right away. And so I, I used that psychology of just getting into what would it look like if God forbid he passed away tomorrow? Cause he's yeah. going to at some point and I'm not God and you're not God. So we can't say when he's going to, but he's going to. Yeah. Rather before you or after you. And you've got 30 years on this mortgage. You just signed two months ago. Right. So what's it going to look like? And she's like, well, it doesn't look very good. And he's like, well, babe, we got this in savings. We got this. We got it. Didn't add up half of the mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it was, yeah. it was, it was good. So I, I mean, once you use that, like, Hey, what's it going to look like? And you paint that picture to where he passes away when you leave the house that evening, are you covered or are you not? Are you going to be okay? Are you and the kids going to be okay? Or are you going to have to go move into your parents' house? And that was always the answer. I'm gonna have to move into my parents' house. I don't care if they got three hundred thousand in the bank or at the end of the day, three hundred thousand is only three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So that's, that's amazing. I mean, and being able to go in and, and help families is obviously what every life insurance agent, you know, is out there to do. You know, okay. help families, okay. and then by helping those families, you're obviously helping your own because you're bringing in an income and sure. protecting your own family as well. Absolutely. I mean, Chris, you. You came in last month to um, AJC. How long had you been watching the videos before you made that that jump and said, "You know what? I'm I'm going to do this." About about six months. About wow. six months. Yeah, probably about halfway into 2021, maybe August, September at the latest. But yeah, it was probably about six, seven months, probably in there. What was the thing that made you take the take the leap of faith? Because in a lot of terms, it is right. 
Yes, it is. It is with anything in this business. It always seems like there's that leap, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's that, Oh, wow. What happens if it doesn't work out? Um, but I knew some people that was already in it mm -hmm. and that had been running the system for a little while, had been working well for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and some people that I actually trust people that I've worked with. And so I was like, okay. And not only that, there wasn't just their testimonials, you know, I would trust their testimonies, but I, there was plenty of them. There's plenty of success stories in the Arturo Johnson consulting and yeah. what the A1 has done. I mean, you can't beat testimonies, <laughs> you know? So it's, yeah. and then of course me, I, I watched so many videos about Earl Hall and so many mm -hmm. videos about Arturo and, and then just the testimonies of what they're doing and what they're doing. And you can see it all over, but this is, this group right here is what, struck me the most wow i appreciate that i mean you've watched like you said so many videos now you're one of the videos that is going to be being watched out here by that life insurance agent you know that is trying to you know make a decision or trying to sure. go to that next level what would you tell them in regards to the ajc program and whether or not they should get involved sure i would think that if you have any thoughts like i did um the experience behind marketing uh, you got to be somewhat experienced, man. I barely know how to open up my email, right? I barely know how to go review one of my clients' policies, <laughs> you know. So, um, and and even that I have trouble in. But no, I've I've there's nothing that they're not going to teach you. Um, if you're thinking about it, it's probably for you. Um, if you're thinking about like how the leads are not the greatest in the world right now, then it's probably for you. If you're thinking maybe I need to learn how to generate my own leads, Arturo Johnson Consulting will definitely help you do that and get the job done for you. They won't do it all for you, but they're going to teach you how to do it. Um, and I'm sure they do it all for you for a different for a different ball. <laughs> but it's it's a great it's a great group. So, well, Chris, I definitely appreciate that, and I mean I appreciate just you sharing your time with us today. I know you're a busy guy, obviously, and you know I appreciate it. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Absolutely. Thank you, Earl. I appreciate it. Hey, not a problem at all. And to everyone else um, that is watching in the listening audience, hey, if you want to check us out, hey, you can book a call. Maybe we're for you. Maybe we're not. But regardless of whether we are or not, we at least want this channel to be a resource for you so that you can get the information that you need. And we'll see you on the next video. Take care.